Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar here from Model AG, how to customize cutting plans for efficiency, transparency, and profitability. My name is Bradley Robb and I'll be your co-host. I work as an international business developer and also a consultant here at TCON and I'm excited to be co-hosting this session today. We have not one, but three great speakers lined up for you. I'm pleased to briefly introduce them. First of all, first off will be Alfred Becker. He is Global Lead for Solution Management for Plastics, Paper, and Packaging Industries at SAP. He's been with SAP since 1999, and for the last eight years, he's been helping plastics, paper, and packaging companies in converting to a truly digital business. He will start off today's webinar by giving a brief intro into specifics of the paper industry. Then Christian Baum will take over. He is Team Leader for Business Applications at Swiss-based Model AG. Today, he's going to share what challenges Model AG as a paper producer faced in the past, what they did about it, and what has changed since. Then, Gerard Goebel will jump in in the practical part and show a, in a live demo what our trim solution can do. Gerard is a senior consultant for supply chain management here at TCOM. He's developed Trim Suite and is the beating heart and soul of trim optimization here at the company. Before we start, just a couple of notes. We'd love to hear from you during today's presentation. If you have a question for our speaker, please feel free to send it through through uh, the web go to webinar. You can enter in questions there as they come available. We will be answering the questions at the end of the session. We will also be recording this webinar. You can take a look at it again after it, afterwards or pass it on to your colleagues, for example. So without any further ado, I'd like to kick things off by welcoming Mr. Becker. Thank you, Brett, for the brief introduction. Um, I wanted to put today's webinar in a perspective of uh, world digital transformation that is happening already and that probably touches most of us in these days. Um, of course, it's relevant for the paper industry as well, or paper packaging industry. Uh, we all know these examples where uh, there's a decline of graphical more magazine papers because people consume their stuff uh, on an e-reader or, or an iPad. Um, or on the other hand, you have uh, examples of uh, internet sales uh, that, uh, I mean, there's a lot of internet sales going on in these days and all these parcels, of course, require packaging paper. So digital transformation can be good and bad at the same time, but you have to be aware of and you have to react. And uh, this is exactly what you see on this slide, uh, the um, investigation of PwC uh, found out that most people of uh, most CEOs also of paper companies are aware of what's going on and they took action, kickstarted in initiatives. Um, but that's more or less an external view or a market view. Now, if you go within a company, of course, digital transformation offers quite some, uh, some opportunities for improvement. That could be something like uh, developing new business models, new distribution channels, uh, or simply inventing new business processes. Um, honestly, from out of my personal experience, most things that I see or most projects which are going on is uh, process improvements. Process improvements uh, in a way that you would uh, revisit what you're doing and you want to enrich that with data that helps someone to make better decisions or you have an automated or integrated process or you can provide all data which is available to everyone who would require it at all times to help people do their things right. And obviously this is best done on the platform that would allow for that kind of integration. Uh, so a platform that is strong enough to support you with running your, your business and still collect data and still enrich everything with the right uh, data to make better decisions. Now, this is what I wanted to start with. This is uh, this graphics that you should see now is uh, um, a sketch of SAP solution offering in these days. Um, I will talk you through that for a second. On the lower left side, you see the ERP system, these days called S4HANA, which allows you to run core processes like manufacturing or materials management. And on the upper right corner, you would have uh, cloud solutions, which apply well to very standardized and industry agnostic processes or, or 
well, areas like uh, human resource management or procurement. And on the lower right side, you have the SAP Cloud Platform that can serve as an integration platform or that can also serve as your application or application development platform. So here is where you would create IoT applications that can do some prediction and uh, this can then be consumed, for example, during a standard transaction uh, to help the processor to do the right thing. And an overarching theme would be uh, integration. An overarching theme is analytics across everything and also the UI, the Fiori. Um, while we believe that this platform is a good starting point or a good, good basis for paper companies as well, uh, it has to be noted that it's by far not complete. For example, many paper companies may need uh, an MES manufacturing execution system or they may require trim optimization. And while there are many vendors on the market, um, I'm really glad to say here is one opportunity to have these kind of, of functions or applications on the SAP platform. So uh, with uh, TCON uh, together with SAP, we're able to provide you with a pretty complete uh, solution offering all on one integrated back platform, which helps you leverage your existing data and get all the benefits of doing prediction and so on and so forth. And um, well, I, I can talk a lot about uh, theory, but uh, I'm very glad that we have uh, Mr. Baum from Model IG, who is a real world user of exactly that kind of solution. And now I'm happy to hand over to Mr. Um, Baum. <laughs> so the stage is all yours. Thank you, Alfred. Thank you very much. So yeah, my name is Christian Baum. And um, like said in the introduction, I'm um, responsible uh, at Model. AG located in Switzerland for the part of business applications and one of the biggest applications that we are um, hosting is um, SAP ERP um, and also some other products from from the SAP but before going to the details maybe a few words only about the model company so the model is a family owned company um, was founded um, already in 1882 so already a long time in the market. And um, the main business, um, let's say, uh, part is the corrugated packaging. What you can see also in the in the pictures here on the screen, this is something that um, yeah, is typical for our company. And um, we are located um, in Europe. So we are a Europe-based company. Um, I have here some information, um, let's say, where you can all find us. Um, the headquarter is uh, in Switzerland, in so-called Weinfelden. And here in Weinfelden is also um, one of the two paper plants um, where we have now introduced uh, the SAP software. And uh, the second paper plant is also in Switzerland, in Niedergösken. And these uh, two plants were not um, running SAP, although we are using SAP ERP and also the, the SCM system, the APO, for quite a long time. So the ERP history of Model AG started in the 90s when we went to the, the Czech Republic. And after that, in 2003, um, the ERP, including the complete logistic parts um, of SAP with all the modules, were introduced in Switzerland. But this was not, uh, not valid or not true for the two um, paper plants. And um, that was also uh, the reason why we said, okay, um, we need to, to check this a little bit more in detail, what we're going to do in the future with that. Um, here you have some uh, figures about the model group. So we are across these Europe sites, what you just saw, um, yeah, roughly nearly 4,300 um, employees. And um, regarding the, the paper production, we have three paper machines as mentioned in two locations. And um, yeah, the, the rough capacity of these machines in a year is about 400,000 tons. And last year, yeah, we were lucky to, to meet nearly this, yeah, what we can say, uh, total output. So we had not much, uh, not many downtimes. And we're therefore um, yeah, very happy with the result also. But the result is not everything. Um, there were more and more requests um from the business side regarding the the ERP and also the the data so um to be a little bit more precise we we did not have um an MES system in the production 
uh, we had only an own built uh, ERP system called ESP or ISP. And with this, we were simply registering the, the reels when they were coming into stock and putting a label on, but there were no recording of consumptions, no recording of times. Um, and in fact, when it was coming to the, the trim optimization, we were using um, another software from GSE software. This is from, from Germany, a software. Um, but there we had already uh, the first problem because this software needs also um, orders to run. And um, we had a separate order entry for the ESP system and for the GSE system. So there were there was a small interface between, but uh, yeah, the users had many times to do manual changes in in both systems, and then um, also the recording of the production was was not happening. Um, so when you really would wanted to know how far we are with an order, you took the phone. That was it. So no system available for that. Um, yeah, and this I think in. In the sum, you can solve this is our, these were inefficient processes. And as Mr. Becker said, now I think the, in the 21st century, data is the, is the foundation where you build decisions on. And we wanted to go there one step ahead. And for us, it was more or less clear that we were looking for a solution based on, on SAP. Um, one main reason was, of course, because we had already the, the ERP system uh, in-house and this, our, this is also our strategic ERP system. Um, and the second thing is that also the corrugated um, packaging plants in Switzerland use uh, the sub-ERP system. And of course, we were looking for an integrated process with these uh, paper plants and the corrugated packaging plants. So the question was um, more or less um, with whom we will do it. So that it will be SAP, it was more or less clear. Um, and we decided for, for TCON. Um, yeah, not at least because um, we found that the integration of, of their, their trim uh, suit within the SAP, but not um, what was very fine, was perfect matching. Um, but in fact, it's also, let's say, all, all around that stuff. So the, the add-ons, which they offered in, in the logistic parts for the warehouse management, for example. Um, and also for the, the planning part, uh, the pre-configuration was matching very well. And also the team made a, a good impression to us. <laughs> so therefore we decided um, that it will be TCON. And the project was started in uh, February uh, 2018 with the first preparations. And one year later, so in February 2019, the first, we went live with the complete uh, part. And yeah, below you can uh, see some, some pictures from the go live. This was really at the first day where the guys from, from TCON was also, um, were also here in Weinfelden and in Niedergösken, um, helping us to get this, to get this in start. Now, especially focusing the, the trim, um, I think as, as already mentioned, um, we had yeah, a lot of manual processes before. Um, and in, the, in this GSE system, um, for example, you had no, no possibility um, to include in a very easy way, for example, a rush order or um, to, to throw an order out. So yeah, I think it, it was a very time consuming and inefficient process there. And um, now I can say, I think from a system point of view, of course, the planners, they're happy because they use one planning system the APO and with this system, they can also do um, out of the box the, the trim optimization. So they don't have to to break the media or go to another system. So it's really seamlessly integrated. Um, and um, yeah, the I think the, the so our trim needs um, is not uh, very high. Um, I think the, in the example, which you will see later, you will see even a little bit more than what we are, um, what, that what was our requirement, but in the end, I think the, we have a really high user acceptance and um, improved usability. And um, the process improvements were even, I think, greater than this, this system improvements. So um, we had uncoordinated processes. I think, as mentioned, when you need to take the phone to, to call into production, how far is the order? I think this is not the, the goal. This was not the goal for us. So um, the now we implemented beside the trim also the MES system from um, TCON and really have now a live view. We can directly see how far is this order 
how was the performance? Um, we measure already um, data um, from the machine also with the MES system. So we have a connection via OPC um, where we get some um, some orders. And I think um, now we can say we have really um, yeah much better processes also within the production. Um, and from a trim point of view, um, because it is, um, let's say the, the orders are blocked. So every order with the same paper type is, let's say in the same block. Uh, this helps also for the planners to easy find the orders which they can combine. Um, and therefore the order entry time and also the, the trim time, so the process time needed for the trim has, has lowered a lot. And they're they're really, I can say, happy with the system. I spoke to them already a few days uh, a few days ago, um, and they confirmed me this. What I can unfortunately not provide is the trim loss reduction we have, because as mentioned, we did not measure it before. We had no MES system. Um, therefore, I cannot say, okay, we we really have a loss in reduction. But for me, it seems, um, and also as this is a feedback from the production managers, um, that we have really a good uh, feeling about it. Um, and that is uh, also an improvement in this area. So, and now I think um, I would like to hand over to Mr. Goebel, and I think he can show you a little bit more about the solution in the in the system itself. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, my name is Gerhard, uh, uh, Gerhard Goebel, and I have the pleasure to cover the next 20 minutes. Um, the, the topics that I have on my agenda for the remaining time are uh, Firstly, I will introduce Ficon uh, as a company. Secondly, I will spend a couple of minutes and a few slides on um, introducing the Trim Suite solution, like uh, based on some slides. And last but not least, I will switch to uh, a live system demo. So let's get started with uh, like uh, introducing the company. Ticon is uh, like an SAP partner so, uh, company, we are a uh, value-added reseller of SAP software. So we sell SAP software and we also do implementation projects. Basically, we cover the majority of the applications and uh, uh, products that SAP is offering. <clears throat> um, Ticon has a history of 20 years by now. We have uh, like uh, something like 250 plus employees by now. Uh, we also do a system hosting running more than 500 customer systems worldwide. And uh, as Alfred already mentioned, we also do uh, development of software. Uh, we do that actually in alliance with LAP. We do that wherever we feel or experience from our projects that there is a need because there is a functional gap within the SAP coverage of uh, requirements of our customers. Uh, and most of all, we do that also uh, as close as possible to SAP technology, as you will see in the examples that, that we can show today. Um, what are the, the goals and targets of Kikon? Well, actually, the, the major goal that we have is actually to provide or make our customers happy and successful and make them grow. So we try to cover their requirements, especially in the area of production planning, uh, <clears throat> as well as possible, not only covering what they do today, but enabling them to grow uh, in future. Of course, our own goal is also to, to grow. Um, we do that by um, driving our global activities and also by driving our product development activities. Um, on this slide, actually, you see a, a small subset of the customers that we, that we serve. Um, the highlighted ones are customers that are uh, working or operating in the area of uh, of mill, so they produce or operate on reels and sheets. Uh, not all of them, of course, use uh, the trim suite by now, um, but some others are also missing in the area. Um, and finally, I would like to state that, of course, we try to be as good as possible and we, we try to get certifications. So we are a gold partner of SAP and we have uh, a couple of certifications for uh, the services that, did, that we provide in the area of, uh, of hosting, for example, but also uh, most of the products that we have are certified. So let's get to the second part of my uh, of my piece of the of the demo. Um, I would like to introduce uh, the Trim Suite as a product from Ticon. Well, the Trim Suite, of course, is a tool for uh, running cut optimization. Uh, we cover 
the area of uh, productions of real and sheets. Uh, we have application areas where we do that on a single level, just producing uh, reels that come out of a paper machine, like in the case of a model HE. Uh, but of course, we also have scenarios where uh, the, the reels that are cut are cut in a second step to smaller reels or to, uh, to sheets. So we talk about multi-stage optimization and such a case. Now, what is the main point about this uh, trim suite that comes from Ticon? As you might know, there are like a, a couple of uh, products available on the market that, that cover this, uh, this challenge very well. Uh, the main difference is that uh, the trim speed is coded 100% uh, in ABAP, so it's running on SAP technology. All you need actually is a NetWeaver system. Yeah? It runs on uh, ERP, it runs on s on APO. You could even run it on HR or CRM if you, if you want to do that. Um, the solution itself, not only the interface uh, to the planning system, is certified by now. Um, I mentioned that it's, it's coded 100% in ABAP. Um, of course, there is like a, a mass optimization running in background. Uh, for that, you need a so-called solver if you use linear programming. Uh, for that piece, actually, we, need, we, we utilize a solver that uh, is free of charge to use, and it's uh, actually used and shipped by SAP itself, so you probably already have it in your system. All you need is actually some application that is calling that piece to utilize it for your cut optimization challenges. Um, of course, every piece of standard software that you try to apply in your in your company needs to be adjusted to fit your personal requirements. You're very well aware of that from within all SAP applications. So this is typically done by setting up master data the way you need it, by customizing the application the way you need it, and eventually enhancing it using the enhancement framework from SAP. Exactly the same set of options you have within the trim suite. You know, we have a little bit of master data, like resource related, basically. We can do a little bit of customizing to make the application work the way you need it. And eventually, in rare cases, we need and can enhance the solution using the existing enhancement options that you need, that, that you know from all of uh, SAP's applications. Finally, I would like to mention that we also work on uh, cloud deployment options for the train suite. Um, from a business point of view, I would like to say that the train suite is, again, totally SAP-centric. So it was developed from the view of SAP planning requirements, actually. Yeah, so we try to be as close as possible to uh, what actually planning systems need in terms of cut optimization. Um, I mentioned before that Rim Suite runs on any system, <clears throat> but of course in real life you will need to integrate it. You, you need to, 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 to pick up your, your audit data and, and send it over to the Trim solution. Uh, Mr. Baum just mentioned that, that <clears throat> in his previous system there was an, an interface or <clears throat> eventually even a manual interface to, to feed the uh, Trim optimization software. Um, <clears throat> if you look at uh, the way customers can do production planning with, with an SAP, there is actually a choice of two options. Uh, one is the classical PP, the application production planning, which is part of the classical ERP system. Um, and there is uh, the application called PBDS, um, which used to be part of uh, the APO system only. Um, actually, Trim Suite comes with integration to both of those areas. Uh, so we, we can call Trim Suite from uh, the classical PP using like a jump off from uh, the production information system, COIS. Uh, but actually, we prefer to use PBDS, yeah? um, simply due to the fact that PBDS covers quite a lot of uh, classical planning requirements that are especially needed in the area of mill customers. So PBDS can do finite planning, for example, and it can do planning based on characteristics. So one feature was the I mentioned before is block planning. You will see that in a second in my demo. This is something you can do within PBDS. Uh, on on the, the graphical piece on the right side, you can see that <clears throat> PBDS used to be part of APO. Uh, but I would like to mention that PBDS, PBDS is by now also, <coughs> sorry, uh, PBDS is also available within S4. Um, 
And uh, for the usage of the Trim Suite in PBDS, we have a very nice way to connecting actually the planning environment with uh, uh, the Trim Suite itself. Uh, PBDS has a heuristic framework, and for that reason, actually, Trim is embedded into simply a heuristic uh, of the PBDS. And uh, as a matter of fact, actually, you can then call this Trim heuristic from any planning tool that is available in PBDS. So you can use like a product view, which is an equivalent to MDO4. Uh, you can call it from the planning board. Um, while doing that, we can pick up the data that is that is available there in the planning board, uh, independent of the modeling options that you have. Uh, so any any kind of modeling that is uh, that is common is covered. So by selecting the data in the planning board, we can jump into the trim tool, do the trim optimization, and very important, coming back from the trim tool, we are also able to model the results of the trim optimization within the planning. This is something I will show to you in a couple of minutes um, within the real life demo. Um, so to summarize, actually, I would like to, to mention that um, trim actually um, reduces to what is what it is in real life. It's a, it's a quite complex function, but it's a function that needs to be executed within the planning process by the planner. And by using the trim as a heuristic in PBDS, trim is nothing else but just a planning function. Yeah? There is no big integration project. There is no system break. It's just calling a feature of the planning tool. And uh, at uh, Model AG, I remember this very well. We started on a Thursday morning uh, to implement trim, and we did trimming and creation of trim sheet orders, which is the way to model the trim result by noon. So it took half a day to, to make it work. Before we switch to the system demo, there is one more slide that I would like to cover roughly. This is like a slide you might have a look at afterwards. In more detail, this covers the, the main key benefits that we have. Um, just to pick up a few of the items that I mentioned there, of course, uh, trim optimization is always about waste reduction. This is, this is obvious. But uh, there is much more that we, that we have to consider within trimming. Uh, one topic is, of course, uh, maximizing the yield if there is like tolerance being provided by the sales orders. Uh, there is uh, something like reducing setup times. Um, eventually, we have to minimize uh, the uh, material you have on stock by, by, by executing trim based on existing stock and lots of other things. Um, but I would like to, to stop here showing the slides and switch to a system demo. Um, actually, one more sli slide of that. This is like a summary of what I would like to show to you in the following. I do have three examples I would like to present. The first one is an example on uh, real production in paper industry. This is actually a setup that is pretty close to what model uh, AG is doing. It's a little more complex actually, but still it's quite similar to the processes they, they have. And I will do this example out of the planning board of uh, PBDS. So you see like the real life integration of the trim application that we offer. Um, this will be followed by an example where we do a multi-stage optimization. So we have there a set of orders for sheets and the challenge is to uh, take care about the production of, of reels and sheets at the same time. And the last example will be uh, an example from uh, the area of, uh, of, of, of film. So there we will do a, a stock-based trimming where uh, for each of the stock elements that we have in the warehouse, we also have a list of quality issues. Yeah? So this will be a print from stock including quality challenges. So let me switch to the system. The first demo that I have is actually out of the planning board of PBS. So what you see here actually is one of the planning tools that SAP standard is offering in this case in an APO system, but it would look exactly the same in S4 by now. Um, so on the horizontal axis, you see the timeline. Vertically, you see um, a set of uh, resources. And this is an example of paper production. Um, uh, there, there has been order entry for a whole set of sales orders, and they all were planned downstream using exact lot size. So that's like visualize the material flow for 
one of these orders and you see that the production planning starts down there on the paper machine where actually jumbo material has to be produced. Uh, these jumbos then are passed over to the coding line. After the coding line, the cutting takes place. So we have the slitting or cutting line. This is actually the level where trim optimization comes into play. And finally, there is another level of, uh, of operation, which is the pack packaging line. Again, it doesn't need to be as complex as this. At Model HE, the, the setup is, is much more simple than, than this, but nevertheless, it, it displays quite nicely the way the trim suite is working and integrated into uh, PBDS. So let's switch into trimming now. Uh, the challenge is actually to pick up all the orders that are there on the slitting line, like somewhere in the planning board. Now, the advantage of block planning is that the paper machine orders, they all um, uh, collected themselves down in this block. So what the only thing the planner has to do is actually mark this block and start one of the heuristics of APO. In this case, it's the trim speed heuristic. So from there, we simply switch into trim speed. Um, a little explanation on what you see here. I don't have enough time to explain everything, of course. You see various steps. The, the first one contains the list of orders that have been passed over from production planning to the trim tool. So we have order numbers, we have uh, the widths of the reels, we have quantities, tolerances, uh, and whatever is needed to really describe the requirements uh, precisely. Um, secondly, we have a list of uh, resources. These are the cutting resources that we have including their technical properties. This is a kind of piece of master data that you need to maintain once uh, before using the trim solution. And finally, there is a tab called optimization. <clears throat> In here, actually, the planner can describe his personal definition of the optimized solution. Uh, as mentioned before, of course, it's always about minimizing losses. But again, it's also much more, yeah, depending on the, um, the possibilities of your uh, of your resources uh, setup time might be a small issue, might be a big issue. So by assigning uh, cost functions to various aspects that somehow influence the optimization, you can kind of uh, tell the solution what your personal definition of an optimized solution is. So once this is done, the only thing you have to do is actually start a solution and uh, go for the optimization. So this is the result of this first example. Um, what do we see down there? We see the overall quantity on paper that is needed from the coding line. We see the overall loss, which is 0.1% uh, net loss. The gross loss is a little higher. It includes like the technical loss that we have on the left and the right of the patterns. We see some, some further uh, information about the overall uh, KPIs. Of course, it's possible to dive into more detail. This now is the list of patterns that we have with the number of sets and so on. Of course, the solution is interactive, yeah? So you can, of course, check which order is covered from uh, which items in uh, the graphical piece. You could also go for like a drag and drop to change the cutting plan in case this is necessary. So overall, you see that uh, within a few seconds, you come up with a rather optimized cutting plan. So this is actually the, the demo number one, uh, but there is one piece missing. The question is, how do we transfer this information back into the planning system? Uh, first of all, the details of the cutting plan that you see here are not really relevant for the production planner. Of course, production execution has to be aware of those. For that reason, actually, when saving the result here, we send the cutting plans over to ECC and from there to the MES system. In our case, and in Model AG, uh, this is MES CUT, which is another product from uh, TCON, but it could be any system, of course. Yeah. So the really the, the, the details in there are not relevant for production planning. Uh, of course, we need to know which orders are covered by this trim solution and uh, what are the quantities that, that have been trimmed. And of course, we need to know what is the quantity needed for the downstream planning. And actually, this is what we put back to the planning system. I saved this one here. We get a so-called trim sheet order being created. And I would like to pull your attention to the uh, graphical piece in the, in the background here on the planning board. If I confirm this one, you can see that actually 
the planning situation cleared up to a high degree. There is only one order left on the cutting level. And this order um, is serving all the packaging orders that we have on top. But downstream, there is only one order on the coding line and one order on the paper machine line. So let's have a short look at this order. And you see, oh, sorry, I picked the wrong one. Uh, this one is the right one. So this is a so-called trim sheet order. So it's an object provided by SAP actually, uh, having multiple outputs. So actually in here we see whatever has to be cut out of this one cutting order. So all the sales order lines are covered with the quantities being trimmed. And downstream towards the coding line, there is only one component containing the full quantity out of the trim application, including all the trim losses. That we have. So you can see that actually using Trim Suite integrated in a PBDS, we not only have a, a trim application which is running quite well, but we also have the full integration, uh, meaning sending data to the trim tool and also working with the results and putting it back to the um, to the planning board in the right manner. This was example number one. My the second example, as I mentioned before, is. Uh, it's a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, here we um, called Trim Suite not with a set of uh, real orders, but in this case the orders are for sheeting. Yeah, so they are described by like the sheet dimensions, by the orientation and the number of sheets that we have in a ream. And now here the challenge is to come up with a cutting plan for two levels at the same time. So the challenge is we have to create jumbo reels, we have to cut them into smaller reels so we can feed them to the sheeting line. And this is like a small example for like a so-called multi-stage optimization. So let's see what the trim is proposing out of that list of orders to give you a rough uh, understanding of uh, what we do here. So what you see here actually is a result that is divided into areas. The green piece over there is actually the cutting proposal for cutting jumbo reels to small reels, while the lower part actually is the list of cutting patterns for the sheeting line. So we can have a look at this in more detail. So this is actually uh, the proposal from the solution to create jumbo reels. In this case, like the jumbo width is, is variable, which sometimes is the case while the second piece then down there is consuming what is coming out of the, the first piece, the real cutting. And here we get the proposal on how to cut that down to all the sheet pallets that we need. So this was my second, second example, uh, like demonstrating that a trim suite is very well capable of doing a multi-stage optimization. And this leads me over to my, my last example. Let me get out of here and start the last example. Now, this example is uh, actually from a real life customer that we have. What they are doing is, uh, is, is that they, uh, they, they put color on film. And by doing that, actually, they, uh, they use uh, quality inspection systems to make sure that the color coverage on the film is perfect, which not always is the case. So for that reason, when they cut the coded film to small reels to ship them to their customers, actually they have to be aware of uh, the quality issues on the mother reels and make sure that the cutting is uh, avoiding those areas. So for that reason, in this example, you see not only a list of, of orders for like small reels, but we also have a list of receipt elements. In this case, it's a list of batches uh, that you have in your warehouse. Each of the batches, again, of course, has some dimension, it has a quantity or a length. And in addition to that, we have a set of quality uh, information. So in this example, you see that there is uh, like a defect area on the very left side of the wheel from uh, zero to 20 millimeters. There is another um, bad area at the very right side of, uh, of the wheel, and there's one in the middle. And now the big challenge to the trim application is to actually make sure that we get a perfect cutting pattern, minimizing losses, minimizing setup times, but at the same time, 
avoid the defect areas. And again, it's only running the optimizer once, and you get like a result that looks a little different to what you saw before. Uh, I need to explain that a little. Uh, basically, you see that uh, the black areas are the defects that we saw before down there. So like uh, the last one relates to this black area and so on. Um, then you see that actually uh, there is a splicing taking place. So more than one batch was utilized for that reason we have like a splicing line down there. And of course, the replication is also aware of splicing requirements from your customer. Yeah? Um, and finally, you see that there is always an adjustment of the splicing in such a way that the first knife has not to be moved at the end of the game. So this was my last example. Um, so you saw like trimming from PBDS from the playing board on a real example. You saw multi-stage optimization for cutting reels and sheet. And the final example was on uh, a quality trim, a trim from stock, including the, uh, the defect information on the slides. Thank you very much for your attention, and I would be happy to answer any questions in case there are any. Okay. Thank you very much, Gerhard. Um, as Gerhard just mentioned, um, we have a, now an opportunity to ask any questions or have any questions answered. Um, I'm not sure we're going to have an opportunity to talk later, so I wanted to thank our speakers, uh, Mr. Becker and Mr. Baum. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Um, and, and giving us some insights into the world of trim optimization and, of course, to Gerhard for also his uh, interesting demonstration as well. And if you have any uh, comments, questions, or want to get more information, feel free to reach out to uh, myself or Gerhard, um, whoever you would uh, be happy to get in touch with. Um, so thank you very much and uh, all the best. Until then.